Cougs House Athletic Director Chris Pesman has been fired from the University of Houston on Thursday, June 20th, which begs the question we've been asking since 1995. How do you get fired on your day off? You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Cougs, the daily podcast all about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach joining from vacation. My name is Parker Ainsworth, and whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater, can just by. Thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. If you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, Tell us in the comments down below a time or job you got fired or job you got fired from or time you should have been fired because that's the topic du jour. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors and more on that in a second. But as I mentioned, we're bringing you Locked on Cougs from vacation to talk about the breaking news on Thursday that is Chris Pesman was fired as Houston's athletic director. I like to talk some about what Chris Pesman did while he was on campus. I'd like to talk some about who could replace him, but first we got to talk about what went down. So Chris Pesman was fired on Thursday. I should stress that as recently as Wednesday, Pesman and uh, head basketball coach Kelvin Sampson, new head football coach Willie Fritz, were all out touring, doing the Cougs, Cougs on the Road campaign, you know, out having different meet and greets, answering questions and having panels and doing all kinds of things to help the Cougar athletic program. Uh, and reports indicate that Wednesday night's uh, session or, or interview or what have you, there was no indication in anything, even down to body language and demeanor that Chris Pesman had any understanding he would be fired on Thursday. In fact, Duarte, who initially was the first I saw, I believe first to report of this, via Twitter. Um, Duarte said in his own article for the Chronicle that this was a surprise to Pesman, right? Um, and so I think a lot of people are wondering like what happened as the final straw. Um, we reported earlier this uh, summer uh, working somewhat with uh, Scott and Holman folks that they had at first about some issues with softball and the program, uh, some off the field stuff there. We've had plenty of complaints of on the field or on the court stuff with really most programs outside of volleyball and men's basketball. And to some degree track, the track team has had a number of outstanding athletes. You could talk about the team performance here and there, right? But outside of that, you could talk about how football underachieved. You could talk about how baseball and softball underachieved. You could talk about how, uh, I don't know, uh, insert women's bat. I mean, we talked on this show once or twice about women's basketball and coach Huey underachieve. I mean, different programs have just not seemed up to snuff with this big 12 move. And people will talk about on the field stuff, off the field stuff. What could be, what could be uh, shortly after Duarte treated this, tweeted this out on Thursday afternoon, uh, Dr. Couture, president of the university issued a statement for the school on behalf of the school Um Notable things from that were that they're going to do a national search. Uh, so it's not from PESMA. It's not a resignation, not from the athletic department. It is um, a national search coming from Couture, um, not doing any kind of internal search. Uh, and that Raymond Bartlett, uh, the uh, VP in charge of finance and things like that at the university, is going to be serving as interim AD. Notable that that's not an athletics person, not a person from within the department either. And so, you know, beg some questions as to why not assistant to the AD, Garrett Classy. More on him in the next segment. But there's a lot of things that are interesting from that. Um, Pesman's been there since 2017 as the athletic director. He was a letterman and captain in, from 1990 to 92. Um, and I guess in wake of this, there's been a couple reporters that have come out and more breaking news type reporters than I am for sure. Um come out saying that, you know, they'd heard reports that he was on thin ice and uh, that some donors may have lost faith and, you know, that things weren't going as planned. Uh, I think some people were trying to draw connections between this firing and last week, um, SMU announced, you know, your rival up I-45, that 
Uh, they'd raised $159 million in donations since being, it was announced they're going to join the ACC. Uh, they had $100 million of that in the first seven days. And I think there's been a lot of comparisons drawn on the Twitter spheres and things like that between their move to the ACC and Houston's move a year ago to the Big 12 and how dramatically different financially those two have been supported, right? And that falls, for whatever reason, to the athletic director, right? And I, I think that that's an interesting comparison. I don't think that that had nothing to do with it. I don't think that the softball off the field stuff had nothing to do with it. I don't think the successes on or lack of successes on the field had nothing to do with it. I don't think that anything had nothing to do with it, but I don't know if anything had everything to do with it either. I think that this is very clearly an accumulation of a lot of different things. They won Keir, the one Cle the one key and clear indicator uh, being that Houston is behind in this NIL market. Modern college athletics, uh, Couture mentioned in her uh, note as well, that this idea that like Houston needs to adjust to the modern world of college athletics. Um, NIL deals are just part of the game. You know, I'm not going to tell you if you like them or not. I don't really care if you like them or not. They're a part of sports and where we are today. And truthfully, to compete with the big boys, and I don't mean just to be afloat in the Big 12. I mean, to compete with the big boys in football, you'd be raising between 15 and $20 million in NIL dollars a year. And in basketball, you'd be between four and five. And in basketball, Houston's getting close based on a lot of their own efforts. Uh, Landon Gosling and, and the Sampsons, are, they're doing a great job with that. But they're not there. They're competing because they've got great coaching and players in spite of the system around them. But football's not even really close to half that. And I think that that is where the programs after a year in the big 12 feel ill-equipped for what's going forward. And we talked about that a little bit. I mentioned we were on vacation this week, but in our last episode last week that Samson called out the, the program, the athletic department in his media availability uh, uh, last Thursday, um, when asked about the first year in the big 12 and what he thought about it, he mentioned that, a lot more about football and about the school not really being ready and said that Houston is in the big 12, but is not a big 12 school yet in terms of funding. And he, you know, frankly approached it from a marketing perspective and getting people out to the football games, getting people out to have a good time and, and building up revenue based on having great experiences at these events and things like that. Um, and I, I wouldn't say that that had nothing to do with it either. Those very public of Samson and, he, you know, if one person in that athletic department is going to the Hall of Fame, it's him, right? And and so I think that it's easy to look at like it as a piece, but I don't think this is entirely unrelated either. And for what it's worth, I, I can't imagine a world where Samson and Fritz and David Rear at the volleyball program aren't at least consulted uh, and and asked their opinion on whatever the next hire is. They may not get a vote in what happens. And we can, at some point, I'm sure, argue about the if they deserve or don't deserve a vote in what happens. But they're going to get to weigh in on the decision. They're too big a names and too big a parts of the brand itself to do uh, just, what, just go without their opinion. Um, so all this is to say that Pesman being fired on Thursday was a shock to him, a shock to the system. And even folks that had heard he was on thin ice in the last couple of weeks felt kind of shocked that it got ha it got pulled or you know they got you know cut off when it did. And I I have to say, Houston opens up as a premier job. I, I mentioned that you've got a Hall of Fame coach in basketball. You've got a football program looking to rebuild under a you know fantastic nationally respected coach. You've got all of the resources that is the city of Houston in your backyard. Uh, you've got a, you've got Dr. Couture as a president of the university that wants athletics to succeed, understands that this is the front porch and lawn of your university. It's what people see. And I think that that all shapes up to make this a pretty uh, desirable job, to say the least, right? Um, now, honestly, and obviously, this is going to be a job that you need to pull in some donors to, you know, help navigate 
uh, both in helping pick the person and then helping them be successful afterwards. And that's going to be a big part of what we talk about in our second segment. We look at who could be next. Um, I got three names that jumped to mind very, very quickly for different obvious reasons. I want to keep navigating this as they pop up. Before we get into all that, we're trying to build a championship-level program. If you're trying to build a championship-level ride in your driveway, passion, drive, and patience are the formula for winning championships and also what keep your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has got everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And at the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because the eBay Guaranteed Fit, you're burning rubber and not cash. The parts you need and the prices you want is to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive. eBayOwners.com. Else rides only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. So in looking at what comes next for this job, um, I should, I guess, point out this is not the job Pesman got when he took it seven years ago, right? Uh, this is not a small university by any stretch. It's not a school finding its way by any stretch. This is a power for program. It's utilizing the city. And again, I'll stress, you got a future Hall of Fame coach in basketball He's got some public pull both within the sport and the city. You've got a football program with a you know facilities reconstruction and revitalization underway and a football coach that is sparking energy in the fan base. You've got a nationally relevant volleyball program, right? Uh, you've got things working in your favor. You also, as Joe Duarte would point out uh, on Twitter, you have a number of different coaches that are – shall we say, on their last leg. Um, Duarte is the first one to tweet this, so I don't mean to point anything out that I haven't already said. But he pointed out that Kelvin Sampson, you got signed through 26-27. All indications are he's going to be followed at some point by his son. I don't know how long he goes after 2027. Willie Fritz, you just got. But baseball, Todd Whitting is only signed through the 2026 season. right? Ron Huey, women's basketball, Next season is the last season on his contract, right? Uh, Dave Rear in volleyball has been very successful. He's only signed through 2027, right? Tennis, you just signed a brand new coach, but she's also only signed through 2027 in volleyball, which or softball, I'm sorry, which we mentioned the off-field issues. Kristen Vesely, her, her contract runs out at the end of July, and if the stuff off the field and cleaned up, you might just let that one roll. Right. Uh, this job is also a great job because it's going to pay Power Five money. Pesma is making in the six hundred thousand dollar range. Stands to reason the next guy to make more. Um, there's no, there's no reason a group of five person wouldn't take that kind of money. And for what it's worth, all three people I'm going to mention here are making less money than that at their current gig. Yes, that's everybody. All of the people. So when I look at uh, what's next, I look quickly, okay, what's Twitter saying? Who's leaking what? The popular name is Jeremiah Dickey. Now, Jeremiah Dickey is a popular name and a familiar name because he was former athletic director Mac Rhodes is like number two in charge from 2015 to 2017. Mac Rhodes, remember, was at Houston, left Houston for Baylor uh, in 2017. Uh, he, uh, Jeremiah Dickey followed him there and kind of continue to earn, add additional things to his name and resume before ultimately taking over as the AD at Boise State in 2021. I should point out that Mac Rhodes' name was also floated because he left Houston for Baylor, presumably because it was a Big 12 job. Um, I'm not opposed to folks who are familiar with the school, but I doubt Mac Rhodes is the answer to this question, although it would do a heck of a job to build up that Baylor rivalry, some I guess. Uh, Jeremiah Dickey, in a more realistic sense, has done a great job at Boise State. Um, he's got one of the highest ranked and touted NIL programs in the country. Uh, they did this great system called the What's Next program, and they got voluntary, non-exclusive, 
all in-house agency for their student athletes that is all above board and all follows all the rules and T's and gets all those uh, student athletes money in their pockets with help from the administration to make sure they're doing it the right way. Um, he organized all of that in his time as the AD uh, on the field in court. Uh, you know, they've had a, a, a building basketball program to navigate a couple different coaching hires in his time in the football program because folks keep leaving for bigger jobs like Brian Harson and stuff like that. I think it stands to reason too. That's a guy that NIL stuff has clearly been important to. Um, he hired a coach in December and Spencer, Spencer Danielson. Um, and, and it came out later after the hire was made. Danielson was like reportedly made like debating, not letting freshmen be involved in NIL. The school later had to put out a, a statement saying, no, no freshmen are allowed to, that's just not like his personal preference, but like you're allowed to be involved. Uh, football as a you know program that runs the money at schools, it stands to reason like, does he want to stick around and watch that through or not given that that came out afterwards. Also, it should be pointed out that Jeremiah Dickey, as the athletic director at Boise State, is making four hundred thousand dollars. Again, Pesman just got fired, making in the sixes. Stands to reason that that'd be a significant pay increase to return home. In a lot of ways, for Jeremiah Dickey, a very well respected up and coming athletic director at Boise State. Um, another guy that you be familiar is Garrett Class. You know, Garrett was the assistant the, uh, the last year. Um, and I think it's probably pretty um, condemning to his case here that he was not named the interim Raymond Bartlett being a money person was, but Garrett uh, came from Nebraska just a year ago. And I wonder if there was some inclination that when they pulled him in from Nebraska a year ago, like, Hey, if things go South with Pesman, do we just bring in, Garrett Classy and let him kind of transition. Now, obviously, they didn't give him the interim tanks. So I mean, it's all for not. Uh, I also would point out, though, that as a new guy under Pesman, he might have less of the, like, you know, air quotes around this, but like the odor of Pesman uh, from having been in the program with him for so long might be less, right? Um, before coming to Houston, he was the senior deputy athletic director and interim AD at Nebraska. Um, he has specific oversight in his earlier jobs in Nebraska of the football and men's basketball programs, so has familiarity with the revenue sports, to say the least. He, while he was there, oversaw a $100 million go big ca uh, capital campaign for facilities construction, so he's been on that end of it as well. Um, I think class has got a great resume for what it's worth. It's also a nice guy. I think it works out pretty well for him to at least have his name in this running. And I almost wonder if there's an argument to say you didn't give him the interim tag because you want him to apply or be uh, interviewed outright like the other folks applying for this or other folks involved in this. Um, I think Classy stands to reason as a very strong candidate. And I don't want him to be, you know, thrown out, you know, the baby in the bathwater scenario just because he was with the last guy, because he was only with the last guy for so long, right? And so if you're looking for a change, yeah, he's he's not brand new, but he's not, like, old, right? And uh, last but not least, uh, I was surprised to see this guy makes less than Pesman did, but Zach Selman, uh, Mississippi State, relatively new athletic director there. Um, Selman has a strong connection to the Sampsons, uh, and that... Zach and Kellen Sampson are like childhood best friends. They grew up in Oklahoma. Um, Zach's father, uh, Selman's father, was a like legend in Norman, Oklahoma for his time at OU. Uh, he would have been there around the same time that uh, Kelvin Sampson was coaching there. Um, he just took the job in 2023 at Mississippi State, so it's not like he's been there that long as far as like you know, prying a guy from his home and his roots. I think the Samson connection is strong enough to kind of pull out of that. Again, he was making a little bit less money than Pesman was making, which is astonishing to see given the SEC, this and that and the other thing. But he also was fairly young and inexperienced when he got to Mississippi State. Uh, before that, he was at Oklahoma, involved in their athletic department. Uh, he led a $200 million campaign uh, to help build new facilities. He was also involved in a couple different campaigns to raise money in 2018 and 19 that set records for uh, uh, for financing there at Oklahoma. Um, in his time at Oklahoma, he also spent time uh, as a representative on the NCAA Football Rules Committee, uh, 
generally to do that, you got to be pretty well respected within your region, university, and conference. I think that speaks volumes. And then uh, he, before all that, worked at University of North Carolina and involved a couple other aspects of fundraising and athletic department stuff there. Um, football player at Wake Forest, if you're going to go far enough back there. But uh, I, I think Selman's connections to the Sampsons makes him a, a very real candidate too. Because I said, I don't think they're going to not have a say in any of this. I also think it's for what's worth. He's seen the SEC monster play out for a little bit. So you kind of have a taste of what the big leagues are like. You kind of, frankly, sell your program on what's coming in. Now, this job is challenging. Um, you're having trouble consistently finding new fundraising until you see folks go back to the same old trough over and over. There's only so many dollars you can get from Mattress Mac. There's only so many dollars you can get from Fertitta and Landry's, and you can't continue to use those folks for the same things over and over. Meanwhile, bluntly, you got a fan base that, while I, I love talking Cougar Schwartz to the folks, has very loudly, publicly balked at the idea of increased ticket sales to watch the number one basketball team in America play in the number one basketball conference in America. I think it's fair to question, like, you know, does that make a, does that add a layer of difficulty to this job? Because you're going to have to tap those same people for money. Now you need to be inspiring and sell them on a product and have something worth selling too, obviously, but that's proven to be a stingy proposition. And I, I don't know that that's, I don't know if that makes the job very enticing, to say the least. Um, obviously, your marketing's a little bit behind. You're a year into the Big 12, and you're trying to like still sell this new Big 12 thing to your fans. You've got major city benefits, but you also are competing with the rest of the city. Uh, every sponsor and market type of person you're competing with to put on a billboard is also looking at the Astros, the Rockets, the Texans or even things like the dash and the dynamo, right? Like you're competing with the same people for marketing, not to mention you also have a lot of sec programs that use your city as a second home base. And so how do you compete with those programs as well? Um, it is a challenging job and it's not for the faint of heart. I would be happy with any of the three people I've named. I'm going to continue to look at more folks added a list. Um, but truthfully, it's it's a job that's going to be difficult for whoever takes it. Uh, it's not an easy job. Being in charge of athletics in modern college athletics is not an easy job. And that's not just at Houston. The current landscape is a nightmare. It's a lot of things to juggle. It's a lot of balls to keep in the air. And you've got to do it while also supporting your coaches, creating winning programs, um, shaking the right hands, signing the right checks, Right, like that's a lot of things to keep in the air that weren't a part of the college athletic landscape five, 10, 15 years ago. Right, it makes this job more difficult, no questions asked. Um, the guy that's leaving the job behind, Chris Pesman, uh, did an interesting job at it, I would say. I mean, he, I, I want to talk about some of the things he did in the final segment. So before we bid adieu to Chris Pesman, and you know he was fired as the athletic director, um, I should point out that like there are a lot of things to remember about him fondly. Again, he this is a dream job of sorts for him. He was a former letterman, uh, played football, played linebacker um, in the early '90s, late Southwest Conference days. Uh, he was a team captain, um, and it, it's frankly fair to say that one of his biggest successes was getting Houston into the Big 12 Conference. I mean, honestly, if not for the Big 12, how many of these things surrounding Houston Cougar sports exist? Uh, does this show exist? Is there enough of an audience for or enough of a push for Houston Cougar sports if it's not in the Big 12 for a locked-on program? I, I don't know, right? Is there a new facilities built? Is there a new football facility being built, new locker rooms? I mean... Where's that money coming from? But it's not in the Big 12, right? Uh, you talk about you know, new athletes coming in that you're excited to see play, play football, basketball, bait, whatever. Did they come to Houston if Houston's not a Big 12 school? LJ Cryer came home to play in the Big 12 at home. He had left home to go play in the Big 12 somewhere else before that. 
right? I, I, I just look at this and I think, you know, that Big 12 move, while it was a school-wide move, as the AD, he had to have a big, he had a big part in and had to have a big say in. Um, and ultimately, it continues to pay dividends. He also had Coach Sampson stay put. Now, I don't know that Sampson will ever move now, but for what it's worth, at, at this point, Sampson's been here 10 years. Early on in the tenure, he could have left a bunch of different times. And, um, you know, I think that the vision that Pesman was able to help continue to build with him, the collaborative, the collaborative nature of Pesman included, um, obviously plays a role in Sampson keeping his whole setup here. He could have uprooted that thing and, and taken it anywhere at any point. Now that it's kind of set up here, I don't see why you would. But when Houston was in the American Athletic Conference school and it was being built, like, why, why wouldn't he, right? Um, he also, for its worth, brought brought Fritz through. He brought in David Rear through. He brought he brought in other big name hires as well. Um, he he bought out the Holgerson contract. I think people look over that. I, I certainly didn't think he would. And I think there are a lot of athletic directors across the country that would have let that thing keep playing out. That's a lot of money to spend on a coach you're not having coach, right? He bit the bullet on that. Now I, you know, this is the detractors that would say on each of these things like. You know, the Big 12 thing is great, but the rollout's been bad. Um, Samson staying is great, but what about all these other coaches, right? Buying a Holgerson is great, but that was also his contract. But I think even if the things is, you know, small as fighting the NFL in the blue uniforms, you could talk about how, well, they didn't have any blue merch to sell, and I guess that's fair. I have pointed out that that was a misfire on the show a number of times. I think that's a fair point. But he did push back against the NFL and said, Houston's got their case. We're ready for it if they want to file a suit. And I think that that, like, I think that vision for Houston, whether or not he was following the right steps to live it or not, I think that that vision for Houston is the one that, oddly enough, you and I share. Houston deserves to be the big brand that bucks with the NFL and keeps Hall of Fame coaches and puts itself in the biggest conferences and all of those things, even if the marketing's off here or this has left something to be desired, he had the same vision for his alma mater that you and I do. We just differ on how to get there. And, you know, I, I would point out that this firing is odd. It's odd for a number of reasons. And one, it's odd because he was legitimately less than 24 hours before selling people on the program and had no idea this was coming. Right? It's odd because, frankly, the way these things usually go is that, you know, Pesman has two years left on his contract. He is supposed to have a meeting with Dr. Couture to talk about his, you know, like a normal review at you have your boss. And typically, with two years out, in the sports world, you would say, okay, this year when you see these tangible measures of improvement, you got a year. And the next year we'll talk about extension or no extension. And then with a year left, you're having the conversation where like, do we need to cut ties now? Do we need to cut ties this time next year? What do we need to do? If it hadn't gone right, right? Instead, this is just very suddenly happening. And I, again, there have been things that could have been better there have been a lot of things that could have been better in the last seven years. I'm not going to hide from that. I don't think that Pesman would disagree with that even, frankly, if you ask him in an honest moment. But I don't think that means that this was done right, even if it's ultimately the right thing to be done. I think it's an important distinction to be making as we go through this. Now, the swiftness with which it's being done, I think, begs the question, do they know where they're going next? Do they have an idea of what comes next as they make this decision? And if so, how quickly do you and I find out about that? Will it be Monday? Will it be a week from now? Will it be July 1st when the uh, athletic calendar rolls over? Where does this happen? When does this happen? We'll be following it each and every day here at Locked on Cougs. Now, I am still on vacation. So don't get mad at me. These don't come out every day while I'm on vacation. 
However, when news like this pops off and it's too big to ignore, we'll sit down on a couch with a lapel mic, some internet research I did after everyone went to bed, and we'll talk about it. Locked on Cougs is the primary Locked on Podcast. Every day, go Cougs.